Currently in Grounded, there are a total of 29 Milk Molars and 22 Mega Milk Molars that you can use to boost your player progression with personalized power-ups designed to increase your survivability across the backyard. In order to go on the Mystic Crusade to collect these gooey cavity filled teeth shaped vitamins, you're going to need a tier 2 hammer along with the tier 2 dagger. Most of these glowing orbs of milky goodness are encapsulated within a thin chalky shell that you'll be able to break through with your hammer. Underwater, these orbs will glow free from their confines but are usually sealed away behind suspiciously soggy roots that can be cleared away with a few clean cuts from your dagger. I'll be going over all of their locations later on in the video and also covering how best to allocate these power up points because currently there are not enough milk molars available to completely max out your character. Also keep in mind that this upgrade system is something completely new to grounded and like many other aspects of the game preview is likely to be rebalanced and changed as the game is further developed. And when it does, I'll be sure to make a new and upgraded video because grounded themed, grounded related content is basically all that I do here. So if you're a fan of that, you could do me a huge favor by gently touching the like button. And I hope that this video earns your subscription today. What up? It's Tiny Pirate Gaming here with another grounded tutorial video covering everything you need to know about the new Mega Milk Molar upgrade system. The fastest way to locate these orbs of extremely potent power is to use this map. It was originally sent to me by a member of the hashtag Tiny Crew and was found, I believe, on the grounded Discord. If you want to take a look at the map for yourself, feel free to join the Tiny Pirate Gaming Discord where you can find it posted in the Grounded Pictures channel. Collecting all of these magical molars of mighty milky goodness will take a significant amount of time if you're planning to locate them all at once and before you embark on your enterprise to establish more raw energy, you're going to need some very important pieces of gear. First off, you'll most definitely need a tier 2 insect hammer which can be crafted at a workbench using 4 stink bug parts, 4 berry leather, and 1 boiling gland. You're also going to need a tier 2 dagger that you can use underwater to cut through some soggy roots. You can craft a spider fang dagger using 1 spider fang, 3 silk rope, and 4 spider venom, or a bone dagger using 2 sunken bone, 2 silk rope, and 2 diving bell spider chunks. Either of these daggers will work and you will also probably need to bring along a gas mask, a bubble helmet, and some fin flops to more safely search out and secure the mighty molars of milk. One final very important piece of equipment that you'll need to bring when hunting down milk molars will be brat burst bombs, which will be necessary for destroying a few cracked rocks and opening a few secret passages. Now before I start descriptively detailing every single location where you can uncover these marvels of milky molar mightiness, I first want to detail how best to allocate these points currently in your power up system. Keep in mind that you can choose to allocate these points however you like to fit with your playstyle and also remember that half of the playable yard is still under construction so at some point in the future we're likely to get additional milk molars to further boost our player stats. That being said, if you want to allocate every last milky molar into powering up your player right now, then I first recommend maxing out your mutations using 12 regular milk molars. This will give you the ability to now equip 5 mutations at a time, and since many of the mutations offer perks that can enhance max health, max stamina, and survival meters, being able to use more mutations at a time can supplement any other stats that are currently upgradable by the milk molar system. Now in order to get the most for your molar, I next recommend upgrading by one level your max health, max stamina, thirst burn rate, and hunger burn rate. The reason I say this is because the first level is not only the cheapest to purchase costing only a single milk molar, but it also offers the biggest boost to your stats. Both max health and max stamina will be boosted by 20 points and your survival meter burn rates will be reduced by 
each subsequent upgrade into these four parameters will not only cost more milk molars, but will also boost your stats a little less each time, so nabbing that first slot is essential for maximizing your molar usage. Following this outline will leave you with 13 milk molars that you can choose to allocate however you like. Because I like to use light armor, I chose to focus on boosting my HP to make up for the lower defense stats offered by the light armor class. If you're wondering why I wear the light armor almost exclusively during the hot and hazy update, it's because light armor causes your stamina bar to recharge much faster than any other armor, which grants you access to a super secret grounded playstyle that I call Bax. If you're interested more in learning about the Bax technique, then I highly recommend checking out the grounded tutorial links listed down below in the description. Moving on, we have the Mega Milk Molar points, which will not only impact yourself, but also every player that visits into your backyard. It's also worth noting here to prevent any confusion that regular Milk Molars are shared by all players equally, meaning that in multiplayer, each regular white Milk Molar point can be allocated individually by guests without changing each player's individual total. The Mega Milk Molars, however, once allocated, will result in a total loss to the points for all the players, meaning this will impact all players playing in your save file moving forward. In a lame man's terms, Milk Molars will work for individuals, and Mega Milk Molars work for the whole group. Anyway, Mega Milk Molars will boost the stack size of specific items in your inventory and focus primarily on three main categories. Consumables, which deals with food and healing items such as smoothies, jerky, and bandages. Resources, which covers basically all plant, bug, and rock-based collectibles needed for building and crafting, like plant fiber, sap, ant parts, and more. And finally, the arrows, which covers, well, the arrows. When it comes to allocating these points, I highly recommend focusing on consumable and resource stack sizes for the primary reason being that your arrow stack size is already at 20 when you start a new game, whereas your consumables are only at 5 per stack. Because I explore around the yard a lot and collect a bunch of resources, I chose to max out my resource stack size and to use most of my remaining points on boosting my consumable stacks. Also, keep in mind that this stat boosting effect will not only impact the slots in your backpack, but will also improve the stacks in your storage containers as well. Now, when it comes to locating every last one of these mighty mega milk molars, there's really no set singular path to guide you on. Some of the quests will take you by a few of them, but others are located in obscure regions around the yard that can be difficult and dangerous to reach at times. The best I can do is to simply show you where they all are and go over any important points to keep in mind while searching out each one of these juicy power-ups. Under the backside of the Welp Flavor Drink Soda Can next to the oak tree, you can find an easily obtainable milk molar. Along the wall near the southeast side of the pond is another one, but be careful because there's also a bunch of orb weaver spiders. Down in the area under the tree in the cavern that connects the oak lab to the old anthill, you can find another molar shrouded in darkness. Also, near oak lab on the pond side of the oak tree is another molar that's usually guarded by a sleeping wolf spider. Next, you can find a molar along the north side wall of the pond close to the Franken line and jammed up against the wall above a small puddle of water. You may want to wear red ant armor to retrieve this next one because it's located down in one of the chambers of the red anthill. The next two are both located within canyons found in the haze. One of the canyons is found close to the stepping stones and the other one is down in a canyon close to the haze region field station. The next one is located under the porch close to where the wolf spiders and spiderlings in that area like to patrol. The next milk molar is also seemingly guarded by spiders and can be found down inside of the wolf spider den beneath of the plank cliff. This is a more difficult molar to reach because you'll either have to build up to it on the electrical socket between the hedge and the porch or jump from the top of the porch down to the socket and float to it like Mary Poppins using a dandelion tuft. Another more difficult to reach molar in the hedge can be found atop the apricot puncho juice box and will require building or some skillful leaf leaping along with more Mary Poppins floating magic to reach. On the ground level of the hedge in the southeast corner of the yard is another molar which unlike the last two will be much easier to acquire. 
The next molar can be found in the secluded radar dish lab located above the hedge lab and can be accessed by traveling across some of the branches located on top of the roof of the hedge lab. On the ground level beneath of the hedge lab and inside of a broken lab hallway that's fallen from above, you will find another molar that may or may not be surrounded by spiders. To find another milk molar, you'll need to travel to the north side of the pond where you will find it tucked away along the north wall. In order to reach this next molar of milk, you'll need a tier 2 dagger and probably some diving gear too because this next one is located along the north central shoreline of the pond and can be found beneath of the water and then behind the sunken hollow log surrounded by soggy roots. The next one is located deep down in the depths of the pond and can be found most easily by using the depth hatch inside of the pond lap. From here, you'll want to swim down into the submerged science tunnel and into the room with the big yellow switch where you'll discover the milky molar orb of power nestled in the corner behind a table and some soggy roots. To locate the next molar, you'll want to look around on the bottom of the pond near the pond pagoda until you find an exposed air pipe where you can also find a cave into the wall and in the back of this cave behind some more soggy roots, you'll find another milk molar to add to your collection. This next milk molar is one of the more dangerous ones to acquire because in order to reach it, you'll need to go down into the submerged tunnel that connects the oak lab to the pond. This tunnel can be extremely dark, narrow, and disorienting, so be careful not to get lost or turned around. As you make your way into the tunnel, you'll find on the left side of the tunnel wall after crossing through the portion of the cavern with the broken lab door, another shellless milk molar orb hidden behind some soggy roots. There's also another milk molar located inside of the lunchbox that you can float down and retrieve by jumping off of the top of the picnic table and using a dandelion tuft to safely sail down into the lunchbox where you'll be able to grab it after breaking through the thin candy shell with your hammer. Continuing the collecting will take you to the canyon between the fence and the sandbox where you will find another milk molar tucked up against the wall of the sandbox. In order to reach this next one, you'll need to build up to the top of the tallest tower of the sandcastle located in the southwestern corner of the sandbox. There's also another one located inside of the treasure chest at the bottom of the sandcastle's moat, which you'll need a key to access. The key can be dug up from the sand outside of the sandbox outpost lab, and if you need help finding it, then I highly recommend checking out the grounded tutorials linked in the description. There is another milk molar hidden in the trash region which can be found around the back side of the yoked girth toy box. The next two are located down inside of the black ant hill and to get at least one of them you'll need to bring a bomb. In the dark tunnel that leads to the chamber where the black ant eggs spawn you can find a cracked rock which is the telltale sign that it can be destroyed with a bomb. Once you've destroyed the rock you'll be able to travel to the end of the tunnel to claim another milk molar. The next milk molar down in the black ant hill is found in the lab area on the back side of the door marked with a letter B. This door is located in the same chamber that the black ant eggs spawn in and does not need a bomb to be reached, although having the doors open in the lab can help and as always I hope you brought your lantern which will make spotting it so much easier. The next milk molar will be found atop the tallest trash can in the region and can be reached by traversing over some twigs and a shovel until you reach the top of the upright standing can. The milk molar here is located inside of the cup part for an old thermos and if you've been following the guide then you should know that we're just about finished with all of the regular milk molar locations. The final regular milk molar is located inside of the actual milk molar bottle landmark which can be found under the northern bench of the picnic table on the ground level. Now, moving on to the mega milk molars. Atop the jabby cola can near the west side of the pond, you'll be able to grab a mega milk molar after ascending a hot dog tray. Inside of the Spade Gulch Cave, also known as the Larva Cave, there's an underwater mega milk molar orb located inside of the flooded tunnel near the underground field station there that you'll need a tier 2 dagger to reach. The next two mega molars can be found in the canyons of the Hayes region. One of the molars is located in a canyon on the north side of Rake Rock and the next one is located in a canyon on the south side of the rock. An easy one to snag is located inside of the Oak Lab battery room in a back corner of the room beneath of the batteries. There's another mega molar under the oak tree in the wolf spider den that's sealed behind a cracked rock that can be destroyed by a bomb. To reach this mega molar, you'll have to go to the top of the birdbath where you can find it on the back corner of the lower birdbath's edge. 
Up in the branches that intertwine with the hedge lab, you can find another megamolar. And another one can be found on the ground level under the hedge region located beside of a rock wall. Down inside of the pond depths, there's another milk molar inside of the chest that also holds the sunken outpost burgle chip. Also down in the canyon of the depths is another megamolar along the cavern walls that's hidden behind some soggy roots and can be found close to the first jet turbine pillar. Back on the surface on the far east side of the pond, you can find another megamolar that's nestled along a rock wall. This next one is another dangerous megamolar to reach because it's located down in the flooded tunnel that connects the oak lab to the pond. This molar is located in one of the larger chambers of the tunnel and is seemingly guarded by diving bell spiders that I highly recommend you deal with to ensure safety during your search. Continue down through this tunnel for a short distance and you should hopefully be able to find the glowing orb of golden goodness hidden behind some soggy roots in the bottom of the dark tunnel. Next, you'll want to travel to the region under the picnic table where another megamolar can be discovered inside of a boot print and hidden beneath of a gum nugget that must first be destroyed using a black ant shovel. There's also another golden orb of megamolar mightiness located atop of the table and inside of the treasure chest at the end of the Minotaurs and Myrmidons maze. And if you need help opening this treasure, then I have a tasteful video linked down in the description that might help you out. Inside of one of the antlion pits in the sandbox, you'll be able to find another megamolar after first defeating the antlion to gain access to the underground tunnel. This next one will require some building to reach because it is located inside of a cactus spot on the southern ledge of the sandbox that's just too high to reach because... I'm not just small, I'm tiny! Inside of the flooded exposed pipe that leads into the Hayes lab, you can also find a megamolar orb down one of the tunnels in the back that's hidden alongside an orb of raw science behind some overgrown soggy roots. In the central back area of the tipped over trash can in the trash region, you can find another megamolar hidden between a juice box, a soda can, and a banana peel. Also in the trash region, beside the tipped over cooler, is a partially flooded and crushed soda can that also has a megamolar mashed into the back corner. The final two megamolars are both located down in the black anthill. For the first one, you'll need to bring a bomb to blast open a cracked rock that's found inside of the tunnel that leads down into the room with the assistant manager miniboss. After you blast open this rock, you'll need to blast open a second rock to gain access to a chamber filled with glowing slime mold stalks. Climbing to a root in the back corner of this room will reveal another megamolar illuminated from the ceiling by some more slime mold stalks. The final mega milk molar is hidden down in the bottom chamber of the Black Ant Hill Lab just before you enter the room of the assistant manager mini boss battle and will likely be surrounded by black soldier ants. As I mentioned before, we're most likely going to receive more of these Mighty Molar power-ups in future updates, but for now, that covers everything you need to know about how Milk Molars work and where to find them in Grounded. If you enjoyed the video, you could do me a huge favor by gently touching the like button. I would really appreciate that. And if you want to be notified whenever I upload new Grounded-themed, Grounded-related content here on Tiny Pirate Gaming, then I hope that this video earned your subscription today. You can also follow me on Twitch for live streams, Twitter for channel news, and join the Tiny Pirate Gaming Discord to discuss grounded gaming content creation and more with me and the rest of the hashtag Tiny Crew. So whether I see you here, Twitch, Discord, or someplace else, just know that I really appreciate all of your support and thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Arg matey, watch your step. There be a tiny pirate here.